to the mic, you two go to the mic, brother. So I'm yes. going to go right up. Yes. Go ahead, yes, sir. My name is Dr. Muhammad Musa. Today in the morning, I have you mentioned that the comparative opposition is the Western community to go where the Muslims are Muslim. How would you advise a Muslim professional who is not specialized in Islamic studies to read and to do to be able to you see, I have a shortcut for you people. I know the modern man, the intellectual, is too busy to read encyclopedia, to go to the library. So I know the mentality of the modern man. So what I have done is I print little booklets, little, little booklets different, different subjects. Come on, man. One sitting reading. These are all Arabs and Israel, conflict of conciliation, Christ in Islam, Muhammad the natural successor to Christ, and on and on, Muhammad the greatest. One sitting reading. If that guy, whoever he is, if he reads something, and if it doesn't tickle him, all the books, nothing tickles him, he deserves to perish. Look, the word, these are worthless rubbish. What you do with a human being, you know, you read and nothing interests you, nothing tickles you, nothing inspires you. That guy is an animal in human form. You know, he's just there, eat, drink and make merry, for tomorrow we shall die. There's no difference between him and the animals. But any ordinary person, sincere-hearted person, once reading this booklet, anything that tickles you has a right. Learn the verses. Memorize it and go and start sharing it. Inshallah, your attitude to Islam will change and everything. Go, if he can, if he can't read, you tell him to see my videotapes. It seems to have changed a lot of people, you know, in the attitude. You inspire them to become better Muslims. At least put some militancy in you. You see, we are like castrated animals. The Muslim Ummah is like castrated animals, ready for slaughter. I said, no, this will put some injection into you. Look at the tapes, I make no commission on that. No copyright. You can get my tapes, reproduce them and sell them and make a profit. You can get my books, reproduce them and sell them and make a profit. No objection. Now these are the ways I can suggest. The enough? others, you go and ask your imams and your shafts, maybe they might have some better idea. Is this suffice, uh, No, no, nothing suffices. There's a world of knowledge is so vast. I can't suggest this book is going to do the job. It's just like he, if you're a doctor, you're a doctor, a medical man. You just don't say, look, take this aspirin and do the job. There are so many other complications there. So you have to treat the patient. The patient is very sick. The ummah is very sick. You know, from a medical point of view, spiritual, spiritually the sickness is, no, he's got diabetes, he's got blood pressure, he's got fires. The ummah. Then it was the amount of problems you have, you know, you need more than one did that, you know, to, to heal you. And talk to the lady. You see, my, my, my approach is that I'm talking about me. You know, I don't know whether you know this, the river. Jamal Badi, if you heard him, he is a great scholar. He is the most learned among our people. Jamal Badi. That's on another level. We need his tapes. But they won't be as entertaining as mine. That's all. <laughs> Excuse me, can we speak? Excuse me, can we speak? Excuse me, can we speak? Oh, yes, yeah. he was there before. Uh, Let him ask them you. Yes, yes my brother. Yeah. Assalamu alaikum, uh, brother Zidat. I am Mohammed Sadiq from Shalom. Uh, my question is a bit different from the others. It's just that I wanted, I was in USA a few months ago, and an American asked me, why you guys have, uh, you know, are so anti, not, I mean, you are anti, you know, Salman Rushdie and his book. So why don't you allow, allow people to read his book and let them judge for themselves? Why do you have to suppress, you know? And uh, if by, by suppressing you are sort of, you are, you, are, you are feeling guilty, you feel that, you know, there's something wrong and this and that. Let the people decide, let them read. So I, I, I wasn't able to really answer. So I wonder whether you could uh, enlighten me on that. How one should, uh, you know, what, how should one, uh, what do you call, go ahead, I mean, you know, in trying to come up to such sort of uh, talk, you know. Yeah. You see, one thing, number one, you ask the American. You want to give people the freedom of speech, right? It's right. What about communism? You allow communism, the books on Das, das Kapital by Karl Marx, you allow that in your country? 
You banned it. I want to know why. Aren't you American mature enough to weigh the pros and the cons, good or the bad? Damn it all, why do you have to stop your American people from reading Das Kapital? Eh? Anybody who's a commie, communist, you're going to put him in jail, right? Why aren't you giving him the freedom? With regards to Rushdie, tell, you see, what you have to learn is to turn the table. You know, turn the table. You don't start pleading for mercy. Don't start crying and wailing. You turn the table. I did it in the Royal Albert Hall. I turned the table. I'm telling the Britishers, start with Sulman Rushdie, Satanic Verses, page one. What does he call you? I read it out, I read it out to them. He's calling you Londoners are bastards, the whole lot of you. <laughs> I said, what Londoner are you? Pakistani Londoner? You British Londoner? You Jewish Londoner? You Hindu Londoner? You all are bastards. This is what Rushdie said. You accept that, you love that. You want that freedom of speech. Then he calls Margaret Thatcher a bitch. You know what's a bitch? A whore. You like that? He, in the book he's writing, he had sex with the Queen, the Queen of England. He doesn't even spare her. Then I said, you white people, you know what he's calling you? Your mothers and your wives and your sisters and your daughters? He says, white women, no man, fat, Jewish or non-differential. White women are poor. I can't complete that sentence. <laughs> But there I did it, in London I did it. You see? So, you see, you have to learn to turn the table. What we do is we go into battle without knowing. That's the trouble is that. No, the trouble is I read the book. I just couldn't know what, what garbage you was talking about. There's nothing, I just, from page one to that's the book, there was nothing I could understand. No. I couldn't apprehend anything. You know, 50, you see now, I've 52 times he's used the four letter word. Do you know that? In combination with every other, 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 other alphabet. 52 times. You didn't read that? No. 52 yes. times, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're right, Brother but the thing is, do you think it's wise to, I think it, it, it would be more in, uh, uh, proper, let people read it and, and let, let them make... Uh, uh, no, no, he said, look, if somebody sway your mother, calls your mother a bitch, a whore, I want to know how you react. Ask him. You see, the trouble is, you really, people didn't read the book. I'm watching a TV program from America, and one of these white interviews is interviewing a Muslim, a Pakistan. He said, all right, now tell us now, what was wrong with the book? What's wrong with it? He says, oh, he said very filthy, dirty things. He said, what did he say? And watch, see the camera is zooming on to the guy. Ooh, it's a killer, the camera is a killer. You know, you can show every, what, what, what's happening to your face and your, uh, everything that you can see. The, people can't see me now, but if the camera was on and if you're watching on the TV, you can say, hey, this guy, that question the guy asked, this guy, his face crumbled up. <laughs> All that you can see. And you watch, I'm watching this brother of ours on close on camera. And he is in trouble. He's, he's in a country. He doesn't know what to say. You know why? Because his mother, he promised his mother, his wife, his daughter, he said, you know, I'll be on TV. Eight o'clock, watch, I'll be on TV. And he knows they're sitting there at home watching him. And now this interviewer is asking, what did he say? He says, very filthy, what did he say? So he said, very sure. That's all. Fifty million people are listening. What did they understand? What did you understand? Hmm? I can't translate it for you. I know what it means, but I can't translate it. The guy, the fool, should have said, you want me to say it? What he says? You know what it means? He said, yes, let's tell it. Let 50 million people hear. 